Recently, I bought a Pokemon Go Plus Plus, and it made me think that there's actually a lot of these Pokeball looking peripherals. I thought that'd make a cool topic for a video, so that's what I'm going to be discussing this month. I guess the first Pokeball peripheral we have to talk about is the Pokewalker, came out alongside Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver for the DS. It was essentially a pedometer that you could send your Pokemon to, and each step you take would give your Pokemon XP. You could also collect items and catch Pokemon with it, as well as connect it with other Pokewalkers to get their trainer data to battle in your own game. These devices were amazing complements for the remakes of the games that introduced partner Pokemon. I'm absolutely heartbroken that I lost both of my Pokewalkers. I remember every day before and after school I would connect mine with my DS and bring it to school to connect with my friends' Pokewalkers. For some reason, all my friends would bring Miltank. Fun fact, for its time, these were actually the most accurate pedometers. An engineer at Game Freak clearly knew what they were doing. They should really capitalize on this. Knowing this only makes me miss mine more. By the way, the Wii Fit meters that Nintendo released a couple years later for Wii Fit U look suspiciously a lot like a Pokewalker. In fact, I don't even remember buying these. Where did these come from? That's it for cool gadgets that got packaged with the main games. The rest of these are mostly just expensive novelties. The first one is the Pokemon Go Plus, which is essentially just a button on your wrist. It connects with Pokemon Go, and it would let you know if you're close to a Pokestop or a Pokemon. If you were close to a Pokestop, you would press the button, and it would spin the Pokestop for you. If you were close to a Pokemon, it would attempt to catch it with a regular Pokeball. You would have no idea what you're catching, so for all you know, you could be wasting Pokeballs on a Rattata. It didn't boost the odds or anything for catching these Pokemon too, it's just throwing regular Pokeballs, so obviously most of the time it failed. I only used this like once or two times. It came out pretty late, when I was already almost over my Pokemon Go phase. I remember being able to spin Pokestops being useful, but the fact that it also vibrates for random Pokemon made it a little annoying, because there are Pokemon everywhere, so it was constantly vibrating. The button flashes in RGB though, which I guess is kinda cool. I am also a fan of the design to be honest. It does look kinda sick. The next one is the Pokeball Plus. Finally, they made a better Pokeball. This was a special controller you could use only for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Eevee. For the record, I don't actually like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Eevee. I thought they were a slog to play through. Did this controller make my experience any better? Only in a novelty kind of way. Aside from that, you're sacrificing more buttons for a sphere-shaped controller. It is not comfortable. You put your thumb on the joystick, you gotta wrap your pointer finger all the way around to reach the button on the very top, and you kind of rest it on the rest of your fingers, so it feels like you're holding a gardening hose. It has all the functionality of the Pokemon Go Plus, so I guess there's no reason for this anymore. Actually, you can also send a Pokemon from your game into it, and travel with it. Kind of like the Pokewalker, but the shape factor is just not there. It would not look normal in your pocket. The existence of this device also gatekeeps you from completing your Pokedex because it's how you get Mew. I guess that's part of the price tag. Between the other peripherals, this thing also gets the most boring strap award. I guess it feels more like throwing a Pokeball. But honestly, docked isn't even the best way to play this game. You can play it in handheld, and aiming becomes significantly more accurate. I should talk about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Eevee in another video. There's a lot I can say about these games. The last device I'm going to talk about is the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. I don't know why they didn't call it the Pokemon Sleep Plus. I guess they thought that this would be funny. Which they are correct. This one easily has the best packaging. The others were basically loose in a small cardboard box wrapped in bubble wrap. They actually put thought in the presentation here. It's just another device with a button. I don't know what else there is to- That's pretty cute. Honestly, I would prefer a selection of music box renditions of popular Pokemon town themes or something. Jigglypuff singing is a huge missed opportunity. I won't nitpick though. You hold down the button to start and stop tracking sleep data. You can absolutely accidentally hold down the button in your sleep though with how big it is. The button on this one also flashes bright RGB, which is kind of ironic for a device meant to measure sleep. And of course, it has the same functionality as the Pokemon Go Plus. 
Apparently you can throw great balls and ultra balls this time, but I never tried it so I don't know. Unlike the Poke Ball Plus, it's better shaped to be carried around. I was gonna say it could easily slide in your back pocket, but with where the button is, it would make a pretty good whoopee cushion. This strap is nice too. I think I would only recommend these devices if you played Pokemon Go, or if you didn't want to worry about accidentally setting your bed on fire while playing Pokemon Sleep. Seriously, they ask you to leave your phone on overnight on your mattress face down. Clearly no one at Pokemon Company owns an iPhone. Unfortunately, no amount of PGPPs will give me a good night's sleep, as I am always kept awake at night by the fact that I lost my Pokewalkers.